Um, my name is Nikhil Kumar, and as you can see here, I will be talking to you a little bit about the heart, but not just any aspect of the heart, more of how heart disease affects young athletes, namely um, high school athletes. But before I get started, I'd like to tell you a little joke. There are a lot of ups and downs in life, and if you don't have any, it means that you are dead. Um, let me give you a bit of a background on the human heart. There are two atria, two ventricles. Now, the most important chamber of the heart is the left ventricle, which pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the human body. Now, if anything were to happen to this left ventricle, disease of any sort, it would be severely compromised, efficiency would be lost, and could be fatal. Now, let me give you some statistics from the National Center for Educational Statistics. There are about 15 million high school athletes, I mean high school students, in the United States currently. About half of them play sports. Now, this number, 10. This is the number of high school athletes that die every month suddenly on the field. Now, this may be small in comparison to other, uh, to other death statistics, yet it is athletes who are playing the sport that they love. It affects the entire community because this event is so tragic. These athletes are seemingly healthy, and when they go in for their checkup, they check out fine, yet they are obviously not fine. Now, the most common disease of the sudden cardiac deaths is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, the left heart is a normal heart, but the one on the right is a hypertrophied heart, which is a heart that uh, has an overgrowth of muscle, which leads to smaller left ventricle chamber size. As you can see here, the left ventricle is um, barely existent. Now, it results in less blood flow to the rest of the body, as well as um, less efficiency that the heart can beat with. And when an athlete plays a sport, and he overexerts himself, then the heart can't keep up and it goes into cardiac arrest and the athlete dies. Now this machine right here, it's, it's revolutionary. What it, I mean, although it has been around for over 100 years, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It provides a quantitative and qualitative way to measure the waves uh, that the heart emits. And this machine as well, results in, um, it, ca it can help find diseases such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, it works by providing a three-dimensional um, view of the heart by attaching leads to places around the human body. And what this does is it can help find diseases that may occur in the bottom, in the top, left, right, etc. And the best part about these machines is, if you're insured, of course, it would cost you only $100. Now, this is, a, this is quite a bit of money, but it is a small price to pay for your life, for your child's life. And of course, um, it, it, it is definitely worth it in the end. Although you may not, you most likely don't have this disease if you're uh, caught with this disease, then it will most, most likely save your life if you're playing sports. Now, this is me, playing the sport that I love, cricket. Now, I, I am an athlete. I, know, I have many friends who are athletes. And this issue hits home for me. And it really, it, it really means a lot because it could be my friend out there it could even be me, that could die of one of these diseases. Now, I thought to myself, I can't let this, I can't let this happen at Gunn High School or in my cricket community and my cricket team. So I paired up with Stanford School of Medicine, our good old friends down the road, to conduct a study on the hearts of high school athletes by also uh, comparing them to collegiate athletes, to professional athletes, and in 
in, the, in the middle of those endeavors, I was able to test the hearts of Stanford athletes. And I mean, this, I mean, as, as well as the San Francisco 49ers. Now, this is, this is pretty remarkable. It, it, just a side note here. It's, I mean, these guys have been my idols for as long as I've known. And to be able to meet them, uh, although in a professional setting, I couldn't get any autographs or pictures or anything. But um, to be able to meet them, to conduct, to conduct t tests on them, a, a dream that has been um, long standing for me, um, it's, it's remarkable. And I was able to take that data, put it to good use, and compare it to high school athlete data, college athlete data, and um, yeah. The, the findings that I had were, OK, let me, let me just start off. I tested 95 male athletes and 87 female athletes. Now, uh, the findings that I had were pretty remarkable. It was that sport does not have an effect on the hearts of high school athletes. Now, you may be thinking, well, I exercise and I, I'm, I'm fit. Well, yeah, you, you probably are. But in, <laughs> in um, the cardiac setting, the statistics that they use to map different waves, different beats in the heart, they remain unchanged as a, um, as a factor, as affected by sport. Now, these diseases, the aforementioned hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, is, um, is a genetic disease. That's given. Yet, the fi my findings showed that it was not perpetuated by sport. It was just a simple, isolated event that caused the deaths of these athletes. Now, I'm pleased to say that we have zero athletes um, at gun with a heart defect, those that I, uh, those that I tested. Now, you may be saying, hey, I took AP statistics class, and greater than 30 is normal, right? It should be, it should be um, you know, correlated to the population of gun. But no, this is a disease for outliers. And as, uh, as you saw earlier, 10 a month out of 7.5 million people um, die um, of, this, sorry, of this disease. Um, we're all thinking, what can you do? What can everyone in this room do to help make a difference? This machine, the automatic external defibrillator, is, has been a lifesaver for hundreds of thousands of people out there, maybe even millions. And it's pretty remarkable that um, as of last week, there was nothing done in the Palo Alto Unified School District to install some of these to you know, maybe prevent a death in case somebody collapsed on the floor. But I'm pleased to announce that, um, as per Palo Alto Online, the Palo Alto City Council has approved of a $93,000 uh, plan to put 37 AEDs in the, um, in the district, in the city. And by 2014, we will have automatic external defibrillators in our gyms. And this Save a Life Foundation, the Eric Paredes Save a Life Foundation, is a foundation that is based in San Diego. Now, what it has accomplished is that it has tested 7,000 high school athletes. And this is a pretty remarkable number. I only got to 200. But this foundation was brought on by the fact that this individual up here, Eric Paredes, he um, underwent the same fate that a lot of other um, high school athletes did. He died playing football. And uh, because of him, his parents started a foundation to help test athletes and prevent them from dying in the future. And so far, 70 athletes out of the 7,000 that they tested had tested positive for some sort of disease. So we all know that it is working. And side note, the electrocardiogram testing is mandated, meaning it is mandatory in college and professional athletes. And you, if you are playing in a professional or collegiate league, you have to take one of these. But it is not mandated in high school athletes because of the costs associated with it. But if 10 people are dying per month of a disease that can be prevented, it's, it's really not worth it. Um, what can you guys do? What can you do? You can, first of all, um, go with my previous 
um, assertion to get a get an electrocardiogram for yourselves. Um, that's the that's the easiest and best way, uh, most foolproof way. But I'm a senior, and I'll be graduating this year. But many of you parents, many of you underclassmen, can try and push for some sort of a reform to help bring electrocardiograms to the school. And that that just be a better district overall, where we don't have to worry about sudden cardiac deaths in high school athletes. Thank you.